In this video, we will first take a look at the piece The Disputation of the Holy Sacrament by Rafael Sancio, which is often simply referred to as La Disputa. This piece is a fresco which was commissioned by Pope Julius II in the 1500s to decorate the Vatican stanza. This is one of the few paintings that the Pope commissioned along with School of Athens and Parnassus. Raphael began this piece in 1508, but it was not finished until 1511. This fresco is very large, measuring 16 and a half by 25 feet in size. Across from this fresco is Raphael's other fresco, the School of Athens, which will be of importance later on in the video. To begin, we can see there's a diversity within the painting of both heavenly beings and earthly beings. Raphael has created a scene spanning both heaven and earth. The three levels of this painting depict the three different levels of divinity. The bottom row contains mortal and less divine historical members of the church. The second level depicts divine prophets and the saints such as Peter and Paul. This row also includes Jesus, Mary, and John the Baptist. The third row, on the top, shows the completely divine and heavenly layer of the church, including God the Father, surrounded by angels. As I previously mentioned, Jesus is found in the second row, right underneath God the Father, and the dove, representing the Holy Spirit, is right below the figure of Christ. God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit line up in a straight line symbolizing the perfection of the Trinity. Furthermore, we can see how Raphael depicts the Trinity using a triangle which further symbolizes the perfection and the stability of the Trinity. Directly below the Trinity and on the lower level of the painting which is depicted as the earth is an altar. On either side of that altar we see many theologians debating about the transubstantiation, which is the process of changing the Catholic tradition of partaking of bread and wine. Among these theologians are the original four doctors of the church, Pope Gregory I and Jerome seated to the left of the altar, Augustine and Ambrose to the right, along with Pope Julius II, Pope Sixtus IV, Savonarola, and Dante Alighieri. We also see a curious bald figure in the lower left corner reading a book and leaning over a railing. This figure is Raphael's mentor and Renaissance architect Baramonte. This is worth pointing out because Raphael consistently used his mentors and people he respected as models for the figures in his paintings. So there's a lot going on here. What does it all mean? Why was it painted? What is Raphael's point? Ultimately, the fresco was made as a reminder to everybody about the Universal Judgment Day. It also clearly showed the people of that time the relationship between the church militant upon the earth and the church triumphant in heaven. If you look closely, you can see Raphael's hidden design of the Great Cross. Constituted by the horizontal line of the saints, prophets, and patriarchs on the clouds, and the vertical line of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, plus the Eucharist, you can form the shape of a cross. This cross suggested that Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 22-24 as I mentioned before, Raphael has another painting across from the Disputation of the Holy Sacrament, called the School of Athens. In the School of Athens, you'll find many of the greatest philosophers such as Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, etc. Daniel Orth Bell wrote in the article New Identifications and Raphael's School of Athens. It has been suggested that there is a programmatic link between the two works, and indeed both seem to share a theme. The source of all knowledge lies with the divine. In the Disputation, this wisdom was shown to be achieved through the study of theology and by participating in Christ's sacrifice as an embodied Eucharist. In the School of Athens, spiritual illumination is reached through the study of philosophy and science, coupled with the personal sense of altruism. Now back to the Disputation, Raphael provided an image that jumps out of the fresco and forces the viewer to realize the linear importance of the God, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Host. The most noticeable aspect of the disputation would be the composition and symmetry. Mary Elizabeth Pottles wrote an article for Touchstone Archives. For all the activity, there is no lack of focus. All of the perspective lines, all the diversity of figures converge toward the monstrance at the vanishing point of the picture. The Trinity, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and the altar are all lined vertically in the middle. God the Father would be seen as the superior while the altar is the least of the four. The composition and placement of all the elements gives it a sense of harmony, movement, and unity. Now, let us take a look at the art piece Adoration of the Trinity by Alfred Durer. 
This is also commonly referred to as the Landauer altarpiece since it was commissioned by the rich merchant named Matthias Landauer of Nuremberg. Interestingly enough, this altarpiece was commissioned in 1508 and completed in 1511 just like Raphael's The Disputation of the Holy Sacrament. The painting is oils on panel and to house the painting, Durer also created a rich frame which depicts the Last Judgment and bears the Landauer's coat of arms. The artwork itself is 53 by 48 inches, which is about 4.5 feet by 4 feet, only about one quarter of the size of Raphael's Disputation. Just like in Raphael's Disputation, in the Adoration of the Trinity, we see both heaven and earth being depicted once again. On heaven we can see the depiction of the Trinity, with God the Father holding up a crucified Christ and the Holy Spirit overseeing them in the form of a dove. Although each member of the Trinity is given individual attention, they are also seen as a united Trinity creating a triangle. This is important since the triangle has been commonly used in art because it represents stability and the triangle is also often used as a symbol to refer to the Trinity. On the top row we can also see rows of angelic beings which are holding up the crucified by triumphant Christ. Below the angels we can also see two rows of female and male saints being led by the Virgin Mary and John the Baptist who shown wearing clothes made from animal skins. The female saints can be seen waving palms just like the multitudes did in the New Testament when Jesus rode triumphantly into Jerusalem, and among the male saints we can see Moses holding the tablets of the Ten Commandments. On the, bar on the bottom row we can see a multitude of human beings led by the Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor. In this row towards the left we can see an aged and humble Matthias Landauer among the peasants being invited to praise the Trinity by a cardinal. You may have noticed that this three-row composition of angelic beings on the top, saints in the middle, and humans on the bottom was also used by Raphael. Carolyn Carty perfectly summarizes this composition when she wrote, The various elements of creation are seen in a hierarchical yet symmetrical scheme, angels and saints above men, heaven above earth, old law opposed to new, clergy opposed to laity, all drawn together by the central trinitarian image, the throne of mercy. When it came to signing his artworks, Durer was far from simplistic. In fact, here we can see a mini self-portrait of Durer holding a sign which when translated reads, Albrecht Durer of the Nerth made this in the year of the Virgin 1511. Although Raphael and Durer came from different artistic periods, we have shown how similar these two art pieces are in their composition. This shouldn't be too surprising since we know that Durer visited Italy during his lifetime. Although Raphael's disputation was a massive fresco, and Durer's altarpiece was far smaller in size and made from oils, these two pieces show the strong influence that religion played in Renaissance art.